What if Tanjiro is a time breeding? The title and thumbnail might be a little misleading to the true story and nature that this what if is going to be having with it the entirety of the story. This is not exactly going to be Tanjiro being omnipotent with time and being able to control every aspect of it. Instead, it's going to be more similar to a Goldo-like ability from the series Dragon Ball Z. I'm not sure if a lot of you guys are accustomed to it, but there was a certain character in OG Dragon Ball, which with the ability of holding his breath, was able to stop time until he started breathing. And that's exactly the same subject that we're going to be fiddling with for this what if in particular. This is going to be my first what if demon slayer that I've ever done so definitely make sure to comment down below how I do on this and if you guys go on to enjoy it and let me know by leaving a like down below and commenting seeing as that's the best way to show your support that said hope you guys enjoy hey Ross sauce it up We start our story in the beginning of the anime. Tanjiro would have just been asked by his mother where he thinks he's going as he would look to her and tell her that he's on his way down the mountain. He's gonna go try to sell some charcoal to make more money so that they could eat better for the feast that they're gonna be having soon. She then looks at him and tells him to be careful and not to work so hard, that they'll be fine. As Tanjiro turns back to his mother and tells her that he wants to make sure that they all can feast as much as they want. From here, his siblings would end up coming over to him as they would task him to take him take them with him and Tanjiro turns to them saying that right now he's gonna do this alone they all look down in a little bit of discouragement as he would tell them all nice things to make sure that they're all happy and from here he would go down the mountain sell charcoal and ultimately be stopped by a man who would be caring for his well-being ggs to bro and from here Tanjiro would proceed to essentially make his way back up the mountain as he would arrive he would see the bodies of his dead family members Tanjiro would turn to the direction of Nezuko, noticing that her body is still warm, and the smell of a demon or the smell of something ominous would be through the air. Tanjiro would have lost sight of his air, and it would become extremely hard for Tanjiro to breathe. The moment that he laid eyes on his sister and his dead family, Tanjiro felt like he was dying. Tanjiro felt like a part of him was missing, and his air, it, it completely escaped him. Tanjiro couldn't breathe. And for about 20 seconds, Tanjiro sat there in disbelief. And for a moment, Tanjiro noticed that everything around him stopped. It was almost as if the wind itself and everything would have stopped in its tracks. The hue of the world would have changed instantly into a purplish hue as Tanjiro would wonder to himself what had happened. Snapping back into reality, Tanjiro grabs onto his sister and from here he begins to pretty much drag her down the mountain alongside himself as eventually she would wake up. In a fit, she would try to knock Tanjiro over and they would fall down the mountain. As from here, she would begin to begin attacking Tanjiro and Tanjiro would do his absolute best to keep her off of him. This would result in a futile effort as eventually the, uh, the uh, Hashira would end up pulling up and would pretty much end up being like, Hey yo, that's a demon. I gotta kill her. And Tanjiro would be like, nah bro, that's my sis bro, please, please don't kill her bro. As you know, he looks at him and he's like, nah, sorry buddy, but uh, kind of my job to kill this this demon. And he's like, no bro, please. And from here, Tanjiro, okay, I, I need to stop. I need to, I seriously need to stop doing that. No, but seriously, what pretty much ends up happening is that Gyu would end up deciding not to kill Tanjiro's sister, ultimately due to the fact that it seems as though Tanjiro has a little bit of resolve. Just like in the anime, Tanjiro would use the hatchet to end up catching Gyu off guard, and Gyu would end up realizing the talent that this boy has. Eventually, Nezuko goes over to try to protect Tanjiro, and once this happens, Gyu would be completely shocked. One thing that would change in the story this time around is that once Tanjiro throws the hatchet, he stops breathing for a second. In spite of everything that's happening around him, Tanjiro thinks to himself he hopes that it happens as his breath stops for a moment. The purplish hue of the world would come back, and Tanjiro turns to the direction of Gyu as he would think to himself that hopefully that did the trick. Gyu from here notices that Tanjiro was, you know, running at him without a hatchet, but not without noticing that, as, you know, Tanjiro would be staring at the direction of Gyu, and it would be at this moment that the hatchet would fall and Tanjiro would get knocked out. From this moment, 
Tanjiro would pass out completely as his breath begins to stabilize and you know uh, Giyu would grab onto a hold of Nezuko as from here he would end up knocking her out and he would wait for Tanjiro to wake up. Once Tanjiro does wake up he turns to him and tells him the information as to go towards a certain mountain and to take his sister there making sure to tell him that if she his sister was to ever attack any demon uh, and making sure to tell him to make sure that his sister doesn't attack any people and telling him to make sure that she stays out of the dark uh the light as you know Tanjiro would agree with this and from here he would begin making his way towards the mountain where he is going to be finding his new master from here he would end up finding that same mountain as he would ask for directions from a strange lady and from here he would make his way up there it would be here where Tanjiro would create a basket and make his way up towards the, mount the mountain as he would encounter a demon for the first time or well for the second time if we're disregarding Nezuko. What ends up happening after this is that Tanjiro would begin to face off against this demon as he would notice that it would rush him questioning to himself whether that boy is with a demon. Unsure of this, he would rush at Tanjiro, jumping on top of him as Tanjiro would try to keep him off of him with a hatchet. From here, Tanjiro lunges uh, lunges to try to kick him off, but nothing, until eventually, Nezuko would come flying in, kicking the head of the demon off as the demon would then screech in pain, asking what the hell a demon is doing with a person. As Tanjiro would get up and ask his sister if she's okay, from here noticing that the body's still moving and the head is talking. Tanjiro in a complete state of shock would wonder to himself what in the world is going on as at this very moment you know Nezuko would then turn towards the direction of the humans as she continues to ogle at them and think to herself that she needs to not eat those humans. It would be at this moment that Tanjiro would rush towards the head of the demon as the demon would begin screaming things towards him, wrapping its hair around the hatchet of, of Tanjiro's axe. As from here, he would proceed to headbutt it as the demon would get weaker and weaker, and ultimately Tanjiro would be at a point where he has to hold his breath. Tanjiro from this point on realizes that this demon would be completely still, as Tanjiro would move and realize that everything is completely still. Turning over to see his sister, who would be standing there, he would wonder what in the world is going on as he starts breathing once again after about 7 seconds and snaps back into reality, only to pretty much end up knocking this demon out and then rushing towards the direction of Nezuko, who would be facing off against the demon body part of it. He would then jump off of the cliff with it as Nezuko saves him and from here what would end up going down is that Tanjiro would find himself in the presence of the demon, an old man walking up to him and telling him, to kill it. Kill it now. It's a demon. You have to not have doubt in your mind. You have to be able to be capable of doing what others cannot. Telling him that this is not a moment for him to be weak, to be decisive, to be courageous. Do it now. Eventually, Tanjiro gets closer and closer, inching towards it, breath stopping for a moment. As he looks towards the direction of his left side, seeing that the sun has finally come up. Noticing this, he would notice that the demon would begin fading away, and immediately a feeling of worry would overcome Tanjiro as he rushes towards his sister, wondering to himself what had happened to her. Is she in the sunlight? Is she dead? Making his way towards the shed, he ends up finding her and seeing that she's perfectly safe. As the man would go over to bury the dead bodies, and Tanjiro goes back outside to find the man, as he tells him to follow along. From here, Tanjiro goes over to take a test on top of the mountain as Tanjiro would wonder to himself how easy this test could truly get, noticing that all he has to do is follow the man, that'll be easy with his keen sense of smell, but it would be here that Tanjiro begins to take more steps. These steps would lead him to a realization, traps. He would fall into a ditch as he realizes to himself that this is going to be a lot harder than he thinks, until suddenly a realization would hit Tanjiro, realizing that he has the ability to do something strange, he thinks. Holding his breath, Tanjiro continues running down the mountain as he trips over a wire, right? And it would be at this moment that nothing happens. That wire can't physically do anything considering the fact that time has stopped. And Tanjiro realizing this begins to run down the mountain making it almost too easy. Eventually, it would get to the point where Tanjiro has to gain uh, control over his breath once more and he would realize that this is hard, especially hard. Tanjiro can't stop breathing to avoid these traps due to the fact that the air is already so thin, it's already hard for him to breathe, so he can't make use of this ability too many more times. Only in times of dire need will he be able to use this on the mountain. And so, Tanjiro would begin to make his casual climb down the mountain as he would begin to use his ability of smell and rely on that to be able to come down. Eventually, Tanjiro would clear the test, making 
his way back to the old man as he would tell him that he is done. And the man would be proud of him, telling him that he will train him. And from here, an entire one and a half, one year of training would go down. First six months being spent learning the basics, the other six months being spent hitting a sword, learning how to land, learning how to take hits, learning how to be one with water, and ultimately, writing down in a journey all of his troubles that he would have encountered with this man. It would be here that Tanjiro would realize to himself that this was a lot harder than what he thought it was going to be. This test, this environment, this condition that he's been living in, it's almost impossible, almost unbearable. But every night when he would go back to his home and he sees Nezuko laying down completely unconscious, he would remember to himself what he's doing this for. He's not doing this to kill demons or to avenge anything. He's doing this to save Nezuko. That feeling of avenging his family is nothing compared to the feeling of knowing that he can save Nezuko, have at least one family member by his side, have somebody there for him who can care for him more than anybody else, and Tanjiro will make damn sure that that happens. It would be here that Tanjiro would continue his training, eventually getting to a point where he would be introduced to a boulder which he has to break in order to make his way towards the final selection. After this, Tanjiro would be at a standstill, wondering to himself how in the world he's going to be destroying this boulder. There's, there's no way he would think. That boulder is so hard. Pause. Tanjiro, looking towards the direction of this boulder, would wonder to himself how in the world he's going to get the job done. And finally, it would hit him. Tanjiro thinks to himself that he simply needs to put into practice everything that the master has taught him, and so he would do so, eventually one day running into another young boy around his age by the name of Kabuto. This, this would lead to different method of training, as Tanjiro would train with him as well as a girl who would be there around the same age as himself, a lot different looking, kinder, sweeter. She would be the one who is more kind to him, a little bit of a good cop bad cop routine where Tanjiro trains facing off against Kabuto every single day at first with a wooden sword until eventually they would get to the point where Tanjiro finally faces off against Kabuto with a real sword that day would have finally proven to Tanjiro that he can do it he can defeat a demon Tanjiro ends up splitting the rock noticing that Kabuto would have disappeared and that the strange girl would have as well Tanjiro wonders to himself what happened but with no time Tanjiro has to continue Tanjiro has to go on from here a sensei would appear as he would tell him the truth telling him that in reality he wasn't going to be letting him go to final selection but Tanjiro today he proved this worth and today he will be having his final meal celebrating the fact that Tanjiro was able to make it this far going on to pretty much give Tanjiro the biggest meal of his life a delicious meal at that, as Tanjiro makes his way towards the final selection. Wearing a strange robe, a kimoto that would be of a different color than the one that we get originally. Tanjiro would receive a kimoto very similar to a sensei, Urodaki, as it would be a purple hue, instead of blue. And, during the time that he would have been training alongside Urodaki, Tanjiro would have mentioned this ability of time stopping to him. And during this time, he would have learned to implement that ability with his skills of actually using his water breathing. Now, this would be very tricky considering that water breathing skills are needed. You need your breath. You can't stop breathing to use these abilities, which is the only complication of this breathing style. Because Tanjiro still does learn water breathing. And it's not an ability that is time breathing where he breathes in time Time stop? No, it's not how it works. Tanjiro needs to stop breathing, so that's the only complication of this power. However, Tanjiro has learned a method of using this, stopping time for a brief instance as he would land his blow. And that is exactly how Tanjiro has been training with bamboo sticks, stopping time, slash, stop time, slash, stop time, slash, you get the point. Tanjiro using this training method would have learned that he is very capable, and that method of cutting through a demon's neck would have definitely came in handy with this. With the information that he now has, and the fact that, you know, his master believes in Tanjiro more than ever, considering the fact that Tanjiro has a near unstoppable godlike ability, he would question if this is the this is the form of blood art, thinking to himself if that's something that, you know, he would have inherited, that maybe he was taken over by a demon, something like that. But he would think to himself that there's no way. Tanjiro has the smell of a human. Tanjiro is a human. He must have been blessed with his abilities by who know where. But it's his. And Tanjiro needs to learn to use this as well as, his uh, as, well as his water breathing alongside it to make sure that Tanjiro gets as powerful and as ready as he possibly can for all the adventures that lie ahead of him. For all the hardships. For all the struggles. 
Eventually, it would come the day where Tanjiro makes his way towards final selection. And at this very day, Tanjiro would be introduced to the idea of, you know, the blossoms and the trees that would ultimately keep the demons in check. Tanjiro arriving would be told that he has to survive seven days and seven nights in this strange mountain, making his way towards the other side as Tanjiro will be forced to ultimately deal with demon after demon after demon. Tanjiro would do so, making his way inside of this strange forest on top of a mountain, as he would have a few run-ins with demons. His first one would trouble him, but immediately upon stopping time, Tanjiro would be able to sniff out the, uh, the scent, as using that, Tanjiro would cut straight through the head of the demon, not giving himself enough time to even question it on whether it knows of, uh, of how to turn back a human, how to turn a demon back into a human. He would continue on this journey encountering more and more demons until eventually he would hear the screams of another boy near him. Tanjiro turns to his left only to see a kid running away from a, a, a monster. Tanjiro seeing this would question himself how in the world something like that could even exist. As Tanjiro sees it with its yellow eyes, its red pupils, and its strange arms covering its neck, Tanjiro would watch as it would grab onto the boy and lift him into the air. Tanjiro thinking to himself, act, 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 do something now. Beginning to breathe as he would think to himself, I can do something, I'm not helpless anymore. Jumping into the air, Tanjiro would begin to slash as he would think to himself, I'm too late. But mid slash, Tanjiro would stop his breath immediately. He slashes straight through the arm, landing onto the ground as the boy himself would land as well, and Tanjiro finally would begin breathing once more, starting his time breathing ability, or his water breathing. Tanjiro turns towards the direction of the strange creature, the demon, the mutated demon, as it would tell him and laugh that another one of, uh, of, uh, of, of Uradaki's brats has made his way towards him, saying thank you, asking how long has it been? Tanjiro letting out a disappointing answer to the demon, as the demon would pout in pain and anger and sorrow. It would scream, I can't wait to kill you, kid, because that's the only way that I can get my hands on Uradaki, the only way that I can get my revenge. How will he feel when another one of his students is taken away from him? <laughs> I can't wait to see that smile off his face. I wish I could. As from here, Tanjiro turns towards the direction of the demon as it would throw an arm at him, Tanjiro slashing through it immediately and eventually running on the top of its arm, making its way towards the neck. As eventually, more arms would come in, Tanjiro being mid-air would wonder to himself how in the world he's going to dodge this. Using his head, he would headbutt the arm as he rolls over on top and randomly another arm would spout out from one of the arms that was already outstretched as Tanjiro would realize to himself that he can't stop it. Stopping his breath for just a moment, Tanjiro would dodge out of the way as he would get closer and closer to the demon, and in a flash, in an instant, to the demon's eyes, it would seem as though its head would immediately get cut off. Tanjiro using the abilities of water breathing, as well as his time stopping ability, would easily be able to stop time just briefly, just enough for Tanjiro to be able to cleanly cut through the demon's head. The demon would fall, and it would wonder to himself, how in the world that happened, thinking, this boy can't be the last thing I see, can it? Tanjiro looking down towards the demon would smell the smell of sadness as he goes over towards it and holds its hand. He then looks towards it as he prays for him, praying to God that this man can potentially be saved in his next life. As from here, what ended up happening after this point is that Izuku, oh, Izuku, <laughs> telling you guys, this is literally my first Demon Slayer what if. I never attempted this, and not to mention, this is a one shot, so yeah. But continuing on with the story, Tanjiro continues making his way towards the end of Final Selection, eventually making his way there and picking the ore that his blade will be made out of, meeting a couple of strange faces, a boy with blonde hair seeming to be terrified with a Nacho Kimoto, a girl with strange eyes, a little bit of a butterfly aura off of her, and a fiery, hot-headed brat who seemed to get a little bit ahead of himself, trying to hurt one of the girls which Tanjiro would have bravely stepped in the way to protect. From here, Tanjiro making his way back towards the direction of the mountain would end up seeing his sister once more, as it would be at this moment that Tanjiro would break down in tears, screaming out, thanking everything that had just transpired holding on to Nezuko so tightly that it almost would have broken her had she not been a demon. Totally kidding about that last part, by the way. But Uradaki would encounter them, giving them the biggest hug in the world, asking Tanjiro how he did. 
During the night, Tanjiro would have a talk with him, telling him everything that he had learned and asking him how in the world he was able to see the souls that, of those kids that were killed by him. It, it was unfeasible, but striking it down is simply the souls protecting him. Them wanted to make sure that he didn't say, share the same fate as them. And Tanjiro chalks it up to that very same thing, thinking to himself that it just so happened to be fate. It was meant to be. From here, the next day would happen, and Tanjiro would continue his training over and over and over. Fifteen days eventually passing, and Tanjiro would have used most of those days to take a break. After that first day, realizing that he needed that, very much so. And as soon as the sword came, Tanjiro would be prepared. The sword coming in and a crow bursting through the window as it would tell him, Ah! You have a mission! Head uh, northeast or something like that, right? As Tanjiro turning towards the direction that the crow would be like, Well, I guess I'm off getting a new box from Urodaki as he would thank him for, you know, coming here and, you know, changing his view about things. Tanjiro saying that he has nothing to be thanking him for. He's the one who trained him. He's the one who gave him the tools to finally defeat Muzan Kibitsuji. And so Tanjiro decides to wave him off as he, does, as, he, as he finally departs and goes down that mountain, making his way towards a small town where girls seem to have been disappearing. It would be here that Tanjiro would make his way towards a strange town where he finds a man, which name I completely forgot, but he does find somebody, and through this, he would end up looking for the demon that would have taken all of the girls, eventually making his way towards a strange alleyway where he would decide that he needs to stab at the ground. That's where the smell would be the, uh, the, the, the strongest. Doing so, he would end up saving the life of a young girl, 16 years old in fact, as he ends up being encountered by three different demons, Tanjiro facing off against each one individually. Using his time breathing ability, he's, um, Tanjiro would be able to stop time, briefly just enough for him to be able to slice off the head of two demons, eventually leading the other one to easily get away and Tanjiro wondering to himself how to handle this one. The demon would lunge up at him and in an instant Tanjiro would think to himself that this is it, remembering final second that he can stop time. It's not it. With a smirk on Tanjiro's face, he would turn towards the direction of the demon as he holds his breath, the demon being inches away from his face and clawing his neck as Tanjiro slashes at the arms of the demon, of the demon and of its legs as it falls onto the ground completely in, incapable of moving, asking the question, Do you know where moves on Kibutsuji is? Tell me now! As he would ask him, and do you know how to turn back a human, uh, a demon which has been turned into a human which has been turned into a demon? As the demon looks towards him, and in complete fear would scream, I can't, I, I just can't, going over into the fetal position as its arms and legs would have fully been healed, rushing at the direction of Tanjiro as without even the need of using his ability, he would slash at the throat and arms of this, of this demon. Finally, ending the day and leading to a moment in which everything would finally resolve itself. After this, Tanjiro would end up telling the man to please take that girl home, as he would make his way towards the next mission, being told that he needs to go towards another town where a demon has been spotted. Tanjiro thinking to himself, Ugh, already? Can't I have a break? Tanjiro decides that it's about time anyways, considering that one day less that he uh, takes on the journey could mean the life of one person. And so, Tanjiro makes his way towards the huge town. Eventually, once he arrives, Tanjiro would find himself completely famished and completely overblown by the appearance of this big city, wondering to himself, what in the world these cities got so big and when all of this changed. Tanjiro making his way towards an udon shop would end up ordering a plate of udon as he would sit next to his sister. It would be here where Tanjiro would drop the plate and wonder to himself, what in the world's going on? From here, he would smell that same thing that he would have smelled on that day, Tanjiro realizing that that demon, it's here, dropping his plate and immediately rushing towards the direction of Muzan Kibutsuji. Tanjiro would begin making his way towards this way as he would finally end up seeing a man with the smell being the strongest, with Tanjiro immediately thinking to himself, this is it. Tanjiro not stopping for a moment, not even to let the opportunity go by him. Stopping his breath instantly, Tanjiro thinks, I have to pull out all the stops. Who cares about breathing forms? Tanjiro from here breathes instantly as he rushes towards him and Muzan Kibutsuji would not be of the wiser. And finally, it would almost be as if the boy stopped completely, and by the time that Muzan realized it, his head would have been cut off. However, 
Tanjiro would be completely unaware of the abilities that Muzan is capable of. And from here, as Tanjiro would finally begin to breathe once more, Muzan would end up uh, going over toward attack at the direction of, of uh, Tanjiro. As Tanjiro would get smashed in through a building, and he would end up landing with himself wondering what in the world. He was sure he cut his head off. He saw it with his own eyes. Muzan eventually regenerating as people would begin rushing off in different directions, his cover being blown, and Muzan being in a thick, thick rage, wondering to himself how in the world this brat managed to cut his head off, thinking to himself, no worries, he'll kill him and be done with it. Muzan looks towards the direction of Tanjiro as he says that it was a foolish choice to ruin his second life, and now he will pay. Tanjiro holding his breath at the very last moment, noticing that Muzan would have moved from there in front of him in an instant. As holding his breath, Tanjiro would be in complete fear, but ultimately Tanjiro goes on to slash over and 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 over again. Luckily, actually managing to hit all of the hearts of Muzan, as it would be here that Muzan would fall to the ground and in his last words, as soon as time would start, utter, how, 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 how did you? As Tanjiro looks down at the direction of Muzan and says, I finally avenged my family. They can rest in peace now. As he looks up towards the sky, and eventually a multitude of people would arrive, leading Tanjiro to run towards the direction of his sister, as the big bad of the entire story had been finished. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is where what if Tanjiro had time breathing would end. I'm pretty sure at this point you guys are probably like, bro, the story was just getting good. But think about it. The big bad's gone, and after this, Tanjiro and the rest of the foes that he's going to be facing would just be too boring. Tanjiro having the ability of stopping time would simply be able to take out the boy with the spider ability, the guy that they end up meeting in the house where he meets Zen and Su, and, not to mention, would easily be able to take out the train foe. Not only that, being able to save the lives of multiple people, and being able to master his ability in tandem with his water breathing. Ultimately, later on in life, learning the abilities of flame breathing, and being the only one, or sorry, sun breathing, and being the new and improved leader of the Hashiras. And that concludes today's story. Let me know what you guys thought. And if you guys think that my voice sounds a little bit different, that's just because I'm talking a tad bit slower. And not to mention, I am extremely tired. And so I decided to go with a little bit more of a relaxed tone, not exactly that hyper energetic one that I usually have. So if you guys went on to enjoy the story and or the tone of my voice, definitely make sure to comment it down below. That said, it's been your boy Zether, and I am out. Peace.